in March of 2020, I was an anxious grade 12 student, anxious for the transition from adolescence to adulthood, anxious for my coming of age moment, anxious to walk across that wide stage, donned in a navy blue graduation gown, smiling wildly at my friends and family sitting in the crowd, applause rumbling through the auditorium, confetti blasting through the air. Staring straight into the eyes of my principal, handing me my diploma, the sacred scroll that wrapped around 12 years of my life. <sighs> yeah, well, that didn't exactly happen. We are known as the class of COVID-19. In March of 2020, the vision of our future trembled. And instead of actively reshaping our futures, we sat in our bedrooms, staring at each other through computer screens, winded by a pandemic punch in the gut. Completely confused, watching people hoard toilet paper? What? Instead of being eager to get out there and start changing how the world thinks, acts, and lives, we sat in our bedrooms not knowing what to think, how to act, or what living was even going to look like. The pandemic stole our spotlight, changing how we will all think, act, and live forever. A disruption to the norm like we have never seen before. It's hard to compete with that. There we were in the aftershock of the new normal, feeling like our futures just fell through a fault line. But when valedictorians from all over the world began to rewrite their speeches, voices from some of the world's greats erupted. You are indeed the chosen class for such a time as this. And our world needs you to be the biggest versions of yourselves. It was hard to believe that we were the chosen class in those weak old pajama bottoms, not a toothbrush in sight. So here I am sitting at the dinner table with my mom and sister talking about the shortage of personal protective equipment or PPE in the hospitals where they work. Listening to their conversation, I was truly taken aback. Before this conversation, I didn't even realize the vitalness of PPE during the COVID-19 pandemic. For the first time since the pandemic began, I realized that this was not about me. I looked around the room, trying to absorb this information in. <sighs> From the corner of my eye, I noticed a bright light shimmering in the background. That was my light bulb idea. Literally, that light was coming from my 3D printer. Soon I started thinking, why not use my 3D printer to make PPE and a positive difference in my community? Maybe I could be part of a youth quake, a movement by young people that has the effect to change how many in the world think, act, and live. Youthquakes, or YQs as we like to call them, are not new things. It was a cultural movement that started back in the 1960s and has continued to change the landscape of the world as we know it. A movement that is characterized by looking to youth culture as a source of inspiration. And when you're young, well, the epicenter of that YQ, where it really starts to shake, is when you, identify a pressing issue affecting you and those around you. The magnitude and intensity begin to increase as you work towards fixing that issue and witnessing the impact of your quake. This phenomenon has been witnessed by countless youth around the world, such as Greta Thunberg, a Swedish youth who is raising climate change awareness, and 
Gitanjali Rao, a 12-year-old Indo-American scientist who recently innovated a novel COVID-19 vaccine distribution method. Soon I researched PPE designs and found hundreds of them. The power of 3D printing is truly amazing. Concepts can leap off the page and right into your hand. It didn't take long to have a menu of different PPE devices that could be used by people in my community, such as an ear saver and a face shield. Next thing you know, my principal and teachers at school encouraged me to borrow two of the school's 3D printers so I could increase my output. Just a quick PSA announcement for you folks. We have 3D printers in schools now, instead of typewriters, chalkboards, floppy disks, and or Macintoshes you might remember from your days. I just want to make that super clear. Anyways, back to the story. Soon, I transformed my basement into a 3D printing factory and got a $250 grant from the government of Canada and taking it global to purchase filament. Then, I put out the word through social media to see if anyone I knew needed any PPE devices. Soon, orders started coming in. And next thing you know, 1,545 devices went out the door to over 30 organizations in my community. 3D printing is a technology that scientists and engineers are using to change the way the world thinks, acts, and lives. Put that technology in the hands of youth and introduce them to some of the challenges facing your community, and there will be disruption in the way the world sees us youth. In times of crisis, we can contribute. We have the technology and the means to communicate with one another at the speed of light. That's right, the speed of light. Today's youth have technology and communication skills unlike any other time in history. We may not have had the commencement we all dreamed of, but we became the biggest versions of ourselves. The great part about that story is that I was only one of the class of COVID-19, one part of the youth quake who used their home and school 3D printers to produce PPE for their communities. Yeah, it was sort of a movement by young people that had the effect to change how many people in the world think, act, and live. Think, in times of crisis, we can contribute. We have the technology and the communication skills, and we're not afraid to use them. Act. Look to youth as a source of inspiration. We have innovative ideas and unmatched creativity, and we're ready to support our communities. Don't overlook us when problems need solving in your community. Live. The pandemic holds the power to tear us apart or bring us closer together. We have the drive to create change that will result in a better future for our families, communities, and countries. Now that's a youth quake worth missing prom for. Thank you. <laughs>